Right. Uh, good morning, everyone. All set, ready? Can we begin? Okay. So, welcome uh, to each and every one of you. Welcome to our online students as well. So glad uh, each of you is here. Let's pray and uh, let's get into God's word. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word. Uh, Lord, we pray that you will help us to get deeper uh, in the truth of uh, your word, O oh God. And Father, we pray let the revelation of your word, let, let it work in our hearts and draw us closer to you, O oh God, and help us, O oh God, to become more and more like you. Father God, we pray for your grace. We pray for your leading. We pray for your wisdom, your understanding upon us, O oh God. Surrender each and every person uh, present here, each and every person who's going to listen uh, to this content. Uh, Father, we ask for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So um, this class is about uh, prayer and intercession. So we will... We will try and learn what the Bible has to say about prayer. I'm sure that prayer is uh, something that all of us engage in as believers. And uh, prayer is something that we may have been doing even before we put our trust in the Lord Jesus. So what is prayer? What is prayer? What do you think? What is your understanding of prayer? You just share some of your thoughts with me. Communication, very good. It's communication. Communication with whom? With God. Communication with God, that's true. What else? Anything else? Yes. Relationship, okay. A relationship with God, correct. That's right. Sharing our feelings, very good. Okay, so that's part of uh, communication, but maybe you can say like a stronger communication, deeper communication with God. Yes, that's correct. Uh, what else is prayer to... Mr. Connecting to the presence of God. Uh, experiencing the presence of God, Getrun? Connect, connecting to the presence of God. Okay, connecting with the presence of God. That, that's correct. Sure, thank you for that. Uh, some... Another answer here, prayer is talking to God, uh, says Daniel, Daniel Oliver. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for that. Uh, Moses, you were saying? Okay, having an intimacy with God. Fine. Uh, so prayer is all these things, isn't it? We can think about prayer, and it's not just us telling God something, but it's communication, it's relationship, it's intimacy, it's sharing, uh, it's experiencing the presence of God. And um, as uh, someone shared here, talking with God and uh, Andrew uh, Munro says, it's a two-way communication with God where God speaks to us and even we speak to God. So we sort of sum up what prayer is with our understanding. But we will look at what the word of God has to say about prayer and uh, how should we really practice prayer in our lives. So as many of you pointed out, prayer is uh, communication with God. We can also use a word communion. Okay, communion. Communion is nothing but fellowship. When we uh, spend time with each other, we have a relationship with each other, we build that relationship with each other uh, in a loving and a caring manner. What do we generally term it? Fellowship. So even when we go to church, we meet with other believers, we say, I'm going for a fellowship. So fellowship is where you are uh, intentionally building your relationship with them. They are intentionally building their relationship with you. So in the same manner, uh, we look at our relationship with God as a communion, fellowship, communion, similar words where we are building our relationship. So prayer is a communion with God. So in this communion, 
what happens all the things that we discussed just now expressing our hearts somebody said sharing so we can express maybe sometimes we are um, uh, feeling good sometimes we are not feeling that great uh, sometimes things are going wonderfully well sometimes uh, things are challenging whatever it is we can express to god such a privilege isn't it can we express our um, uh, concerns and uh, our thoughts to anybody do we do that anybody you just pick anybody and tell them your problems do we do that we don't do that it really takes a special person or a special uh, trust and a relationship for us to open up and share and think about this god is inviting us to share our hearts and he wants to know what we are thinking about what we are going through what our concerns are so it's really beautiful that god gives us an opportunity to express our heart the way it is whatever it is we can go to uh, god we can express our hearts that is part of our communion our communion with god uh, is also just talking to god so expression is one thing part of that you could say talking to god um communication is a very important part of strengthening uh, you know good relationships now many of us we may be away from home when we are working or studying what do we do we call our parents we call our family members we call um, the spouse or the children we talk to them why because we want to keep the communication communication is very important isn't it we want to find out how are they doing uh, and uh, we want them to know how we are doing so talking to god is to establish that communication so we don't come to god uh, like okay god i will meet you every sunday sunday service okay 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock i have an appointment with god and then monday to saturday nothing i no communication how can we build a relationship with god if we are not communicating with him constantly okay so this is what communion is communion is fellowship communion is expressing ourselves communion is talking to god right communicating with god and also another thing that happens when we are communing with people or fellowshipping with people is we learn from them some of their characteristics right we understand we appreciate we begin to learn good things from them so in the same way when we have a communion with god what happens is the nature of god we know that god's nature is full of truth justice holiness um power love grace compassion so many wonderful characteristics that we know god has in himself so what happens when we spend time with him we begin to uh, change into the kind of person that god is his heart we begin to understand we begin to recognize okay what is important for god you can understand okay that becomes important for me so we get to know the heart of the person that we are communing with and in this case we are saying prayer when we are communing with god spending time with god we begin to understand what does god want for my life what does god want for my family right what does god want for my church uh, it becomes easier and easier to understand many of us ask the question uh, what does god want me to do what is my purpose what, where does god want me to serve when we develop a communion with god as we strengthen it slowly what will happen we start understanding the heart of god okay this is what god wants this is what um, god is speaking to me so in this manner uh, we look at prayer as a communion uh, all right uh, nidel uh, did, did you want to ask a question i, I can hear you uh, is that a question you have nidel all right so maybe we have that by mistake let's uh, move ahead 
So prayer is not just uh, communion with God, but we can look at prayer uh, as a few other, other, um, uh, you know, some other truths about prayer that the Bible teaches us about. So what is the next thing? Prayer is partnering with God. And I will talk more about it just in some time. Prayer is also partnering with God. So uh, this means that whatever God wants us to do here on the earth, God is working, but he wants us to work with him. So when I pray, it's like, business partners do you know uh, business partners where you have uh, maybe two people they've started an organization or started a business uh, they work together so one person does one part maybe they do the planning the other person helps uh, in the um, uh, execution or working out the plan but both of them are working together but it is only when the two of them are working together that you see the work done in the same way, when we pray, what happens? God is working. God is working all the time. But when we pray, we are partnering with God and a work gets done. So we will talk a little more about partnering with God shortly. So prayer is also partnering together with God. Prayer is a ministry. Uh, what is a ministry? Uh, what is it that we call as a ministry? Any idea? What is a ministry? We keep saying, right? I want to serve in the ministry. I want to do ministry. What is ministry? Sister, ministry is your calling. Ministry is a calling. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. Ministry is a calling. All right. Uh, some something more about ministry what is ministry serving okay serving so that is like the closest term to explain ministry so when we say i want to minister i want to do ministry what we are saying is uh, i want to give myself in service service to god service to people the Bible teaches us that prayer is a ministry. So if I want to bless others, what can I do for them? One of the things that I can do is I can pray. When I pray for others, I am serving them. I am um, blessing them. Uh, I am doing something in the spiritual realm that is helping them. Something that will impact their life for the better. So prayer is a ministry. If we don't know what ministry am I going to do, uh, you know, when I finish my Bible college or uh, when I when I um, uh, maybe complete the current assignment that I have, don't worry too much about it. Yes, pray about it. But right now, there is one ministry that all of us can do. What is that ministry? Prayer. So when we pray for others, we are actually serving them. We are helping them. We are blessing them we will talk more about it you know, as we go ahead so i've said three things so far prayer is communion with god meaning i'm having a relationship fellowship with god second thing is prayer is partnership god wants to accomplish his purposes and he wants me to partner with him so prayer is partnership and the third one is prayer is a ministry so when I want to serve somebody, I can pray for them and, uh, you know, in that way, be a blessing to them. Now, prayer is also warfare. Okay, warfare. We will talk uh, more about it later on as well. We know that uh, there is an enemy, isn't it? whom we as believers uh, have to battle with every day, and that is Satan. So every day, every moment, whether we recognize it or not, we are in battle. The enemy comes against us in so many different ways. So one way in which we can go against the enemy is through prayer. So even when we pray, 
we can destroy the powers of the enemy that he wants to put on our lives so prayer is warfare there is a certain way in which we can pray against the devil against demons against um, uh, demonic strongholds that it actually becomes war so if you want to fight with the devil you can pray prayer is also warfare we can fight it out in prayer so these are all some of the uh, uh, some of the truths regarding prayer now we've understood all these things uh, one one of the uh, i started by saying that prayer is a privilege now think about it god says yes uh, you can speak to me you can come any time you can pour out your heart uh, it's really a privilege because when god is inviting us to go and share that's amazing it's so difficult to get an opportunity to to share uh, with people in general right you have to find the right time you have to find the right space to go and communicate but the privilege that god gives us is he says come any time okay 24 bar 7 just come and you can uh, the book of hebrews tells us that we can enter into the into the throne room boldly meaning into god's office if you want to look at it that way any time when i begin to pray what's happening i'm entering into the headquarters the very place where god's throne is i can go i can approach him directly i don't need to go through any of the people who are standing outside and you know st- sitting around directly all of us as believers we can enter into the presence of god and we can communicate with him we can fellowship with him uh, there's a beautiful scripture in psalm uh, 65 and verse 2 uh, it says about god it says you who hear prayer to you all flesh will come so god is a prayer answering god sometimes we wonder i'm praying all these things is god even listening to me well the bible says he listens he hears he's observing now i don't know if this has happened in your life but it has happened in my life sometimes you know i've prayed some prayers which uh i wasn't very sure that i really want that to happen but as i've seen my life even some simple prayers that i've prayed and i said lord i would really like to learn this or i would really like to meet this person or i would really like to uh, you know go to this place uh, those things have also happened it's amazing when i look back i think wow i didn't take it seriously i didn't even write it down after i prayed those prayers but here is god who hears our prayers who knows our heart and the bible says that uh, the god who hears prayer so when we pray here is our confidence god is listening okay god is listening always remember that when we pray god is listening he hears our prayer that is why we pray to him now in uh, the book of first uh, peter peter writes first peter chapter 3 and verse 12 for the eyes of the lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers but the face of the lord is against those who do evil so when we are righteous how do we become righteous how do we become righteous to begin with how do we become righteous by grace of uh, jesus christ yes thank you thank you getrude so by the grace of our lord jesus christ and the book of romans tells us we are now the righteousness of god in christ jesus so we have already been made righteous we will study about this in our identity who we are in christ we are already made righteous in christ jesus he shed his blood to wash our sins away to justify us and who are we now we are righteous positionally in Christ Jesus but the bible also talks about how we must live out what has happened in the spiritual realm 
yes i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus but i must also lead a righteous life then what happens scriptures tell us god is his ears are open to their prayers it's something like uh you know when you want to listen closely if when somebody is talking maybe you know um uh, let's say uh someone is uh, is feeling very sad okay maybe we are counseling them and they're feeling very sad and they're just not able to express themselves and you know they they're not even able to communicate loudly what happens as a counselor or as a person who is listening to their problems we we may lean forward we may say okay don't worry tell us what's happening how can we help you so you kind of lean forward because you are interested to know now what is that person going through how can we help that person so in the same way and the scriptures are telling us that is his ears are open to the to the prayers of the righteous it means that god is leaning forward he's interested he wants to know he wants to find out he wants to hear the prayers that we are making so this is very important for us otherwise what happens we think that god wants us to pray so we're all praying from here and he switched off you know he's in his own world and you know something like god is saying i'm so busy taking care of the universe i don't have time for all these prayers it doesn't work like that the bible tells us that god is listening god is hearing especially his children when we pray god receives our prayers and that is an encouraging thought for all of us so let's uh, move on let's come to the purpose of prayer but uh, regarding what we have discussed so far uh, would you like to say something or share some thoughts please feel free discussion is always good okay so let's uh, Mister, i have a question yes yes get root yeah many times we pray for a particular request and the uh, request is not uh, answered so is it a no should we take it as no um okay so the answer to this question is in the entire course so you'll have to attend all the classes to find out the answer but in the shortest way uh what i can say is there could be two reasons why we are not seeing the answer to the prayer one is it may not be aligned to the word of god or the nature of god which is why it's not happening because it's not aligned to the purpose of god the second reason could be that it is aligned however we must persevere wait on the lord yeah persevere or be persistent keep praying because maybe the timing is not right or something more is is uh, still to to happen um, or we need to you know press into uh, the opposition that's coming from the demonic realm so there are many reasons why delays happen the first one is that the prayer may not be aligned to the purpose of god the second is it's aligned but you we need persistence okay so does that answer your question yeah true yeah thank you sister yeah thank you thank you for that all right um fine so sanjay uh, is sharing uh, in my early days as a believer i treated god like an atm in my prayer time over the years i've realized that god seeks a deeper and a more meaningful relationship with us okay thank you sanjay for sharing that uh, so what he means is when we want something we go and pray only when we want something some children do that right to the parents only when they want something i need a watch i need clothes i need a computer i need a phone go to the parents but prayer is not just that you know god is not just there to give us whatever we need um, there's much more to prayer so yeah 
thank you for that okay let's uh, move ahead we'll move to this chapter on the purpose of prayer i told us that prayer is more than talking to god now when we look at the way that god created adam and eve okay, go back to the beginning in the beginning the worlds were made everything was positioned and then what did god do he did something very special he created man and woman in his own image okay he created them in god's image and what did he do he blessed them and told them i have given you this this um, a garden now what i want you to do is to take charge take care of the garden and also this world that god gave us he wanted us to have authority over that uh, over the world okay the creation so let's quickly read genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 uh either somebody here can read okay we'll we'll have somebody here read it genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle or over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth okay so uh what do you see there what did god say let them have dominion dominion over what can you please read it again vishnu then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth okay so everything that is on the earth isn't it uh, the creatures which are in the sea uh, the creatures which are on land the creatures that are in the air what is god saying i'm giving you authority i'm giving you dominion meaning you are responsible to take care of all these things so god has given us dominion and authority that is the original plan which god had so we can imagine just think with me suppose adam and eve never sinned how would the world look like in its original design what is the original design god created a beautiful world and gave them authority it's like uh, sometimes you you watch all these movies where you know like narnia where you're the king and the queen and the prince and the princess that's the original design that is god's original design when he created the world he said you have dominion i want you to rule and reign human beings mankind i want you to rule and reign okay and have dominion over all the creation that has been mentioned here in this list uh and there is another scripture in uh, psalm 8 verses 5 and 6 um again we can read it would another person like to read we can all share the responsibility psalm chapter 8 verses 5 and 6 you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor you made them rulers over the works of your hands and you put everything under their feet mm okay thank you um getu so we can see there that god made man and put everything under his authority in psalm chapter 8 says that isn't it human beings god put everything under our authority here on the earth now if you look at another passage okay psalm 115 and verse 16 um uh, if you want to read it you can it's always good when we read the scripture because it will register in our hearts yeah psalm 115 verse 16 
the heaven even the heavens are the lords but the earth has given to the children of men hmm okay so clear the heavens are the lords and the earth is given to the children of men so think with me okay uh, god has given the earth to human beings man and woman now if we take a situation where the parents um uh, maybe they have um, uh, teenage children and they have to go out for a few days on work so what do the parents do they tell the children uh, we know that you can take care of yourself we have uh, you know kept enough food and all that just take care of yourself in 5 days we will come back this house is your responsibility so once they go on work and then they come back whom will they ask about the cleanliness of the house the children why yeah they were given the responsibility what did the parents say you are in charge okay five days you are in charge so when they come back they'll ask the children about the cleanliness will they ask the children about how they spent the money which was given yes they will definitely ask how did you spend the money okay anything else um, uh, how did you how did you manage um, uh, the garden how did you manage this how did you manage that so all the questions will come to the children because who was responsible for the house the children isn't it so the house is the parents but they gave it to the children for those days somewhat similar it's not exact but it's somewhat similar in this case what god is saying is man woman i am giving you the responsibility this world is under your dominion you are responsible i'm giving you the authority so so clear in psalm 115 verse 16 the heavens belong to the lord but who does the earth belong to man and then we keep complaining right god this is not happening god says it's yours i gave it to you you have to take care of the earth you have to take care of the world but as we know originally god made us created us in such a way that we should rule and reign on the earth but adam and eve sinned so what happened after sin something shifted god gave man the authority but when man sinned the authority shifted so now we have interference we are not able to you know uh, uh, only be the sole person to make the decision because satan and his kingdom is interfering in the matters or the affairs of the world uh, we see in luke chapter 4 This is the passage. You don't have to read it. I'll uh, just summarize it for us. Luke chapter four. Jesus goes to fast for forty days. Uh, I'm sure this is familiar for all of us. So Jesus goes. He fasts, and when he is fasting, he is tempted by Satan. Okay. One of the things that Satan tells Jesus is, "Do you look at all the kingdoms of the world? They are mine." if you bow down and if you worship me i will give you the kingdoms of the world but just think with me for a moment this world was given to whom in the garden of eden whom does the world belong to man how come satan is saying is telling jesus these kingdoms belong to me if you worship me i will give it to you that is not supposed to happen right because it belongs to man how can satan say that it belongs to him and try to give it back to us i told you when sin came into the world the authority shifted so no longer do you find uh, that you know man has complete authority yes we still carry some authority we we still work out of a place of authority even when we are not believers because as mankind god originally put us in charge of the world however after sin the authority has shifted to the devil 
so he takes charge and he interferes in the lives of people he interferes in the affairs of the world so there are many things that take place in the world for which satan is responsible you know calamity disaster destruction because it's no longer just us we have interference from satan so we notice in luke chapter 4 that satan is talking about the authority that he is carrying on the earth as well so what do we do now you know what do we what what do we do uh we need to recognize as believers that god's original plan was such that god put us in charge god gave us authority god gave us dominion so we must take that authority right yes satan could be interfering but we can take back that authority and say i am in christ jesus i am already redeemed right satan you have no place in my life and i am taking full charge of um, uh, everything that god has entrusted to me so why are we talking about this authority uh, as far as prayer is concerned the reason is when we pray right one of the things that we are exercising is the release of authority so when i pray and i say god i pray um uh, that uh, the I, i'm just using some example okay that the children who don't have food that they will have food what am i doing i'm exercising my authority originally everyone should be blessed so how come satan is doing this in the lives of people so i am going to pray when i pray god works you understand so prayer is a way through which i can exercise my god given authority to uh, see the purposes of god accomplished so prayer uh, is very very powerful because i am able to walk in the dominion that has been originally given to me so there are some quotes uh, from godly men that i i want to share with us maybe just one uh, it says john wesley we know that he was the uh, the sort of the initiator or the leader of the the wesleyan movement he said the statement he said god does nothing on the earth save in answer to believing prayer so god does nothing on the earth save in answer to believing prayer what did he mean he simply meant that because we are in charge of the world you know there may be uh, circumstances and situations where we want god to intervene but without our prayer it's a little uh, challenging for us to to accept without our prayer what the bible says is god won't do anything you get, are you getting it so if we don't pray nothing will happen because whose responsibility is it it's our responsibility so when god put us in charge he expects from us it is our you know we need to be accountable to god and how do we become accountable to god through prayer through prayer you know we can exercise our authority we can uh, you know speak into the purposes of god and it begins to take place so prayer remember i told us prayer is partnership does god want people to be saved answer is yes but what does the bible say pray for the salvation pray that people will be saved so god wants people to be saved but he wants us to use our dominion and release our authority through partnering in prayer so as believers when we pray we are actually working we are working with god and things begin to happen if we don't pray then nothing will happen that's what john wesley is saying he's saying god does nothing on the earth save in answer to believing prayer so god wants uh, someone to pray it it's a little difficult to understand this concept god is great he can do whatever he wants isn't it why does he want a human being to pray but remember 
the way God has created the world, he has given us authority. And he wants us to partner with him. And without us partnering with him, it's like he wants to do it, but he won't do it. OK, so we'll talk more about this. I'm sure you have questions uh, regarding this matter, but we'll talk more about this very soon. So uh, the purpose of prayer is to partner with God. Now let's consider some examples in the Bible. Elijah, he's known as a mighty prophet of God. But uh, one incredible incident in his life uh, is, is also very well known. The time when there was a drought in the land and they really needed rain. So what happens? You find that uh, Elijah gets a word from the Lord. He's a prophet. He can hear what God is saying. So God spoke to Elijah and said, I am going to send rain on the land. Now, Elijah being a prophet, he's very confident about what God said. And uh, he goes and tells the king, king, it's going to rain. But after he tells the king that it's going to rain, we see Elijah doing something. What did he do? The Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 39 to 46, you can read it later. Elijah uh, goes and he starts praying. Have you heard that incident? Yeah. So Elijah goes and starts praying. He prays and he tells his servant, go look, is there a cloud? And the servant says, no, there's no cloud. Elijah prays some more. Now the Bible says he put his head between his knees and he prayed. Then he told the servant, go look, is there a cloud? And the servant says, no, nothing, there's no cloud. So like this, Elijah prays seven times. Now we can ask the question, Elijah, you're a mighty man of God. God already told you it's going to rain. Why are you praying? You don't have to pray. God already told, right? So if God already spoke, it will happen. But the point is that Elijah knew a, a spiritual truth or a spiritual principle. What is that principle? God's will is there, but God wants a man to pray. Because when a man prays, authority is being released. When a man prays, partnership is being established. So Elijah, though God had already said it's going to happen, what did he do? He prayed seven times. Only after that, his servant goes and he sees a small cloud, you know, like the fist of a man is starting to appear. And at that point, Elijah is clear, OK, I've done my job of praying. Now we can leave this place because it is going to pour heavily. So even Elijah knew that God wanted man to pray. God's will is there, but prayer is required as a partnership. Another example is Daniel. Now we all know Daniel, wise man, righteous man, prayerful man. So when we read about Daniel, uh, we find that Daniel prayed to God. He prayed in Daniel chapter 9 regarding one matter. What was that matter? You know, Daniel was a captive, like he was in Babylon. Uh, they, he and his people, they were not in freedom. They were in captivity in Babylon. But Daniel knew that the prophet Jeremiah had prophesied, saying after 70 years, there will be a release of the captives. Now think with me again. Jeremiah, the mighty prophet said, after 70 years, you will be free, isn't it? So Daniel could have just relaxed. Anyway, God said it, it's going to happen. I don't have to do anything. But we find that Daniel prayed and he said, God, you said that you will release the people. You will restore after 70 years. The time is coming closer. You have to do it. It has to happen. So there is a place for us to take the promises of God and start praying about it. Because that is the way the answer to prayer will come. Is God willing? 
God is willing. He already said, I'm going to do it. But God wants a man. God wants us to partner with him in prayer. And when we partner with him, it's like he's doing his part. We are doing our part. And the answer will come. So even people like Elijah and Daniel prayed for the purpose of God to be fulfilled. Now, we may ask the question, why are we talking about this? You know, uh, it's just to remind us that we now are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it? We, each believer, we are the church. We are uh, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us that Jesus gave authority to whom? He gave it to his disciples. He gave it to the believers. So in Matthew chapter 16, verses um, 16 through 18, there is a, a very uh, you know, wonderful passage where Jesus talks about the authority of the kingdom. And in verses 18 and 19, he says that the keys of the kingdom, I give you the keys of the kingdom to lose and to find. So what does it mean? The keys of the kingdom simply means that uh, he is giving us authority as his body to do the will of God. Okay, So we all carry a responsibility. We know the word of God. We know the heart of God. We know the desire of God. But God is waking us up and he's saying, look, I will do my part. I intend to do uh, what is on my heart, but I want you to pray because that is partnering. I've given you the authority. I've given you the keys. What, what does keys represent? Authority. If I have the keys to this building, it means, you know, I, I am responsible for this building. I have been given the authority. In the same way, Jesus is saying, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Meaning all of you have authority, responsibility. You can do this. And you need to partner together with God. Uh, Aman, you had something to say? Matthew 16, 18 and 19. Yeah, sure. All right. So uh, let me just pause here. Uh, are there any uh, comments at this point? All right, I think we got the picture that, you know, God wants us as the church to be engaged with what he wants to do. So as believers, it's not like, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we look at it this way. When once you're saved, uh, now you will not, you are saved from the, uh, the lake of fire. So life is good. Just go to heaven, right? Now I'm saved. I'm born again. I have accepted the redeeming work of Jesus. Uh, and that's all. But it's actually not that's all. There's so much more that God wants us to do as believers. There is a reason why we are all here. And we are being reminded that God has called each of us. He has given us authority. He wants us to work together with him to see his purposes fulfilled. One way in which we can do it is through prayer. So when we pray, we are releasing the authority that God has given us. So let's take a break now and let's come back in 10 minutes. We'll continue on the same subject. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.